Do you want to know how construction projects deal with issues that arise when things aren't built correctly? Have you ever heard the term NCR or non-conformance report and wondered what it means? Well, this video is designed for you. My name is Tim and I'm a project engineer with lots of experience on the design and construction of major infrastructure projects. I've been building short courses to teach the fundamental construction management skills to engineers and other construction management professionals. So far, we've had over a thousand students enroll in our courses. Each course is loaded with hours of content and practice activities to make sure you're equipped with the skills you need to excel at your job. This short video is an extract of our course on construction quality and completions management, where we'll talk about non-conformance reporting. If you find this video interesting and useful, check out the link in the below description to our complete Udemy course on the topic. Hi, and welcome to section 2.6, where we're going to talk about non-conformances. Non-conformance reporting is the process we have to follow when the works we complete don't comply with the project standards or we don't follow the required quality assurance procedures. In this section, we're going to talk about what non-conformance reporting is, the types of non-conformances, the identification, cause and resolution of NCRs, and go through an example NCR. By the end of this section, you should have a good understanding of NCRs and be able to complete NCRs on your project. As a junior engineer, you'll almost certainly have to do this, as NCRs often do arise due to the fast-paced and often reactive nature of construction projects. So what is an NCR? A non-conformance is basically any deviation from a specification, standard or project requirement. You may be familiar and understand the term defect already. A defect is a type of NCR where works do not comply with the required project standards. An NCR is a broader term, however, that covers any failure to comply with the project quality standards. To manage NCRs on projects, we need to have a good understanding of the process to identify, analyze, rectify, and resolve and prevent them. We call this process non-conformance reporting, and each project will have a specific process that needs to be followed to complete this. Let's now discuss the different types of NCRs. Non-conformances are grouped into two main categories. These categories are referred to as product NCRs and process NCRs. A product NCR is any failure or issue with the actual delivered construction works, i.e. the product that is delivered to the client. This is where the works completed do not meet their required quality standards specified in the design or project specifications. For example, if we are building a concrete slab and use the wrong type of steel reinforcement, this would be a product NCR. A process NCR is any failure or issue to follow the quality management process. This is the process we identified in the quality management plan. For example, not completing an inspection and test plan for works completed. This would be a process NCR. You can have a combination of product and process NCRs. For example, if you were completing a concrete pour and the ITP specified concrete testing was required, if concrete testing was not completed, this would be a process NCR, but potentially also a product NCR, as the supplied concrete may not comply with the design requirements. NCRs can be identified through a number of different mechanisms. They can be identified through inspection, such as on handover walkthroughs, or through standard ongoing inspection while completing ITPs. If we fail any requirement on an ITP that cannot be immediately rectified, this would count as an NCR. NCRs can also be identified through auditing. Auditing may be undertaken by the quality team from either the contractor or the client. They may complete an audit to check all ongoing works have an approved ITP in place. Any works being undertaken without an ITP would result in a process NCR being raised. Additionally, a product NCR may result from a failed test. For example, going back to our electrical trench ITP, 
When completing the mandrel testing, the mandrel could not be pulled through the conduit. This would result in a product NCR being raised. NCRs can be identified by a number of parties, including by the client, the project construction team, including supervisors or engineers, subcontractors, or members of the workforce. With any NCR, there will typically be some sort of rectification costs associated with it, or even costs of investigation. Therefore, it's important from a commercial perspective to identify which party is responsible for the NCR. On top of this, determining the cause is critical so that any future process improvements to avoid this happening again can be implemented. This sort of process improvement is referred to as continuous improvement and a key outcome of any NCR. Some of the typical causes of NCRs include design errors or omissions, for example, if the design was poorly coordinated and resulted in a clash between drainage and services, preventing an installation that complied with service clearances, defective material supply. So if the supplier has supplied poor quality materials or materials that weren't approved in the design, poor workmanship, so if the actual works were not completed properly, poor planning, so if the sequencing of the works prevented the correct installation, and even incorrect survey set out. So now we've identified an NCR and determined what the cause was, the next step is to resolve it. There are different options and methods to resolve NCRs, but typically to close out any NCR will require client involvement. As the NCR is a deviation from the agreed upon project standards, the client will typically be involved and this involvement will come by the project quality manager. The only time the client wouldn't be involved would be if the NCR resolution was to completely redo the works in accordance with the project requirements. In this instance, the client wouldn't need to be involved as from the client's perspective, the end product will be the same as what they originally asked for. The options we have to close out an NCR would be rework to meet the original standard, except without repair, so basically accepting the defective product, repair with changes to the original requirements, so perform, perform some rework, but not to the original standard, reject the submitted proposal. In this case, the contractor, will, we would need to present another solution to the client. For process NCRs, we would typically need to complete some sort of service invest investigation as to why the quality management process wasn't followed and implement a continuous improvement change to ensure that the same quality failures won't happen again. Let's now go through an example NCR. Attached to the course notes is an example NCR I filled out. The scenario for our NCR is a real one that I've been involved in. We constructed an underbore, which is where you use a drill. You drill underground and then install flexible conduit through the hole. Boring is used in place of open cut trenching because of buildings and obstacles where trenching is not feasible for the installation of underground services. As part of this bore, our subcontractor did not install a steel trace wire that was detailed in the design. As you can see in the example NCR I've filled out, all the details around the NCR, including a description and type of NCR. I've also related this back to the relevant ITP and construction quality lot. This is to ensure traceability with the works. Next, I've detailed our proposed remedial action. This involves installing the tracer wire in a separate spare conduit. This solution was classified as repair with concession. An assessment of the primary and contributing causes was also detailed, as well as continuous improvement outcomes. Finally, the proposed rectification needs to be signed off by the client and our design consultant. Our design consultant needs to understand and review the proposed solution to make sure there are no other resulting impacts. The client needs to also be happy with it as it's a deviation from the agreed upon project requirements captured in the design. Finally, once the remedial action is completed, we need to ensure that the remedial action has been completed correctly. This will again require sign off from the client. That brings us to the end of our section on non-conformance reports. In the next section, we're going to talk about the relationship between quality and design.